Hey guys, this is Dimar Yeh from DroidDog.com and today I have the Droid Razor M by Motorola. It's a Verizon phone that's mid-end but has pretty high-end specs. With it you get a 4.3 inch QHD display, Super AMOLED Advanced, a Snapdragon S4 dual core processor at 1.5 GHz, a GB of RAM and 8 GB of storage. Now this combines a small phone with a mid-end display with some high-end specs that you'd find on a Galaxy S3. So you know this phone is going to be very, very fast. It also costs $100 on contract, so it's not all that expensive. The screen on this device is a 4.3 inch QHD Super AMOLED Advanced panel. It has very good outdoor visibility, very good brightness, and oversaturated colors. I say oversaturated in a positive way because I enjoy the oversaturation of uh, Super AMOLED displays. Some people may not like it, but the general consumer definitely will. Unfortunately, it is pentile, so close up you can see a checkerboard effect. And since it's QHD, the checkerboard effect isn't quite unnoticeable. It also has a slight yellow tint, though most people would not notice it unless comparing it with a high-end phone. And a little bit of burn-in. You can tell when the keyboard's open, you can see it slightly when it's closed. And uh, in low brightness, it has the classic Super AMOLED fabric look to it where there are lines on the screen, but that's not really a big deal because in the end the screen is very nice with the deep blacks, beautiful colors, and it's generally enjoyable to use. I'm going to be giving you a quick overview of the device. On the right side there's the power button and the volume rocker. A lot of people say they like the volume rocker and the power button on the same side, I personally don't, it all depends on preference. I always hit the volume rocker accidentally when trying to power on the phone, however some people hit both buttons at the same time because of their grip if they're on opposite sides, it's all down to preference. The bottom of the phone has absolutely nothing on it except for a mic. The left side has a micro USB port for charging and data, and under this cover is the micro SIM and micro SD slots. You just push uh, cards in there and uh, they'll stay in. At the top you have nothing but a 3.5mm jack. The front is dominated by a what they call edge to edge display and you have an LED, the standard sensors, a front facing camera, the speaker under this metal part and a big Verizon logo. And on the back you have the Motorola Kevlar, top is glass with a camera and flash and the speaker cutout. It's a fairly simple phone, and as you can tell, it's a very good looking phone. The front is gorgeous. The back took a little getting used to, but I grew to love it really fast. In terms of hardware, this phone performs great. With the Snapdragon S4 under the hood, it's extremely fast and smooth. It's especially smooth with a custom launcher. This launcher isn't the smoothest, as you can tell, with the slight lags. But in general, this phone performs great. Everything it does is really fast. Multitasking is great with 1GB of RAM, and I absolutely have no complaints. Now, one thing that I did not like is the USB port on the side. When you put it in any sort of mount that holds the sides of the phone, you can't charge it at the same time. I couldn't use it as a GPS device with my car mount. Also, the vibration motor is very nice, but it's not accurate enough for my tastes, but I'm very peculiar in that sense. This phone does have an LED notification light, which is a great addition. It's not very strong, but it does just fine. Now let's talk about the software. As you can tell, it does have Motorola modifications, but it's very much stock. On the lock screen, you get a nice sound switch and a four-way unlock. Right is unlock, left is camera, you probably know that from AOSP phones. Up is phone and down is text messaging. It works quite well and it's elegant. And as you can see, it's very much stock. It has expandable notifications, stock menus, except for icons. Uh, coloring is generally the same, and what I love about this phone is that it has on-screen buttons. Accessing Google Now is dead easy, multitasking is great, I love the phone because of the on-screen buttons and I'm glad Motorola is switching to a very stock user interface. The launcher is slightly modified as you can tell this is your home page and you can only scroll to the right, if you scroll left you get these quick settings. It's a nice launcher but it can get laggy, you can always replace it with something free like Nova or Apex, which performs great, it's extremely smooth. In their pursuit for a stock feel, Motorola decided to include the AOSP keyboard and the AOSP autocorrect. So when you're typing to somebody, the autocorrect will be like AOSP. For example, if you type here, as you can see, if I spell something wrong, it underlines and you can choose from it. This is exactly like stock Android and it's a an really great method, much better than how Samsung removes theirs. Uh, the AOSP keyboard performs well. There's no swiping because this is Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, which it was updated to not long ago. 
However, the keyboard is still very accurate and it's absolutely fantastic. Even though this is very much stock based, Motorola did make some of their own modifications. As you can tell, there is the custom circle widget, which is absolutely gorgeous. I wish they let you use it on other launchers, but they do not. It appears in the widget drawer, but it is not usable. Then there's the problem with the launcher where if you press this button, there's a slight pause. I'm not sure what this is. It was there on Ice Cream Sandwich and it's there on Jelly Bean. It's not a big deal, it's just a small visual thing. Fortunately, there are a few cool things about this phone. It lowers volume when notifications are played instead of completely pausing the music like most other phones. It's a very nice touch. It actually adds a lot of enjoyment to this phone. And it has a few weird little bugs. For example, it does not always pause music when you unplug the earphones. It'll keep playing it through the speaker, which is very strange, but this doesn't happen all the time. Also, with some of the music players that I've tried, the earphone button doesn't work, especially in Google Play and Apollo. You can't pause the music by pressing the earphone button on most earphones, which is strange. It works fine in PowerAmp, but uh, that's a very proprietary way of doing things. You have to pay for PowerAmp. Another problem is that a few apps have issues. QuickPick has the issue of when you press an overflow menu, things tend to flicker, and um, you can't press any of the buttons. Dead Trigger doesn't run at all on this phone. It has a really weird rendering issue, which makes it pretty much unplayable, especially in the menus. As you can tell, it looks really bad, and uh, it looks better than before. It seems like things actually smoothed out, but it used to be really bad. Um, there are a few app issues, but they're few and far between. Generally, your apps are going to work great and uh, look great because of the nice edge-to-edge -edge display which really surprised me. As you can tell with the Kevlar on the back, Motorola was very serious about build quality when they made this phone. The build quality is absolutely fantastic. This phone has a really nice heft to it without being very heavy. The back is Kevlar, the sides are plastic, but the rim around the display is all metal. It scratches easily, but it's very solid. I dropped this phone once and it has absolutely no damage to it. It's fantastic build quality. Unfortunately, this means that there's no removable battery, but it's not a big deal when you have a 2000 mAh battery. The camera on this phone is pretty good. It lacks detail and sharpness, but it's actually a fairly good camera. It takes photos decently fast, it comes out pretty good quality, and I have absolutely no complaints about it. Uh, it's not the fastest camera out there, it's not instant shutter, but it does have good macro and generally good performance, and it'll take good photos for pretty much anyone except for the most obsessed of people. It focuses fast, it focuses really close, and it's a nice camera. The camera UI is decent, but unfortunately it resets every time, so if you turn off the flash and turn on the camera again, the flash will be on again. It's a big annoyance in my opinion, but you can always change the camera app. The HDR on this phone works very well, it takes some really nice photos, and the auto mode it just works as it should, there's no problems with it, I never got any bad photos out of it. The only problem would be the flash. Uh, as all LED flashes, this one isn't very good. It makes photos discolored and it doesn't reach very long. That's a universal problem with all phones and I really feel like they should change that. Next up is battery. With a 2000 mAh battery, you won't ever have to worry that this phone will die. It's easily lasted me a day, every single day. It even lasted me a day and a half overnight one time and it had about 5 hours of screen on time. There are absolutely no problems with battery on this device and it lasts a solid amount. With the Snapdragon S4, which is an efficient processor, you won't ever have any problems. It could be a little better, but um, that's wishful thinking because no phone lasts more than two days. In terms of network connectivity, it runs on Verizon's 4G LTE network. And as you probably know, Verizon's 4G LTE network is absolutely fantastic. There's great coverage, great speeds ranging from 5 to 25 megabit per second down and a really reliable upload, and I've been nothing but happy with call quality, the speaker inside is good, the radios are good. I just think that Verizon performs admirably and this phone performs admirably. So this has been my review for the Droid Razor M by Motorola. If you want more detail, check out our written review at droiddog.com. This is Dima from Droid Dog, I'll see you guys next time.